Before the first gold medal is ever won, an unseen battle is taking place across Brisbane. The pristine sites chosen for the 2032 Olympics are hiding geological nightmares and forgotten histories just meters below the surface. Engineers are in a brutal fight against the ground itself, moving millions of tons of earth, blasting through rock harder than concrete, and battling treacherous slopes to lay the foundations for glory. These billion-dollar arenas are not just being built, they are being won. But as these futuristic structures begin to rise from the chaos, what are the mind-bending engineering secrets that make them possible? The new Brisbane Stadium at Victoria Park is not just a construction project, it's a battle against geology and gravity. The first massive challenge is the land itself. Victoria Park is not a flat piece of land. From one side to the other, the ground level changes by 35 meters. That is as tall as a 12-story building. To create a level base for a giant stadium, engineers must perform enormous earthworks. This means blasting through ancient hard volcanic rock called Brisbane Tuff and building huge retaining walls up to 20 meters high, the same height as a six-story building. The site's past adds another layer of difficulty. Parts of it were used as a rubbish dump, and some areas are naturally swampy, making the ground unstable. You cannot simply place a stadium that will hold 63,000 people on a rocky, uneven hill. The foundation is everything. Engineers will have to drill deep into the bedrock, installing massive concrete and steel piles. These deep foundations will act like the roots of a giant tree, anchoring the stadium securely to the earth. This process of drilling and blasting will be so intense that it is expected to cause major disruptions to the nearby hospitals, schools and homes. This project is caught between two powerful promises. The first is to build an iconic new stadium. The second is to deliver the most sustainable Olympics ever. The Brisbane Games are required to be climate positive, which means they must remove more carbon from the atmosphere than they produce. To achieve this, the new stadium must earn a six-star green star rating, the highest possible sustainability certification in Australia. A six-star rating means the building is a world leader in green design and will have zero carbon emissions when it's operating. But here's the problem. Building on a fresh green parkland site is much harder and more carbon intensive than redeveloping an old industrial area. The massive concrete walls and deep foundations needed to tame Victoria Park produce a lot of carbon. To balance this, engineers must use every trick in the book. This includes using recycled and low emission building materials, designing systems to harvest rainwater, and creating a structure that uses natural light and airflow to reduce the need for electricity. One early proposal even suggested making it the world's largest timber-braced stadium, using renewable wood for 40% of its structure. The final challenge is the stadium's true size. The artist's drawings show a beautiful stadium nestled among tall trees, looking like it barely touches the park. But the reality is very different. A 63,000-seat venue needs a huge amount of open, flat space around it for people to queue safely, go through security, and access food and bathrooms. Experts estimate this requires an area the size of seven football fields. This massive paved area, called a forecourt, is not shown in the pretty pictures and highlights the real impact this giant structure will have on the public parkland. If carving a mega stadium into a hillside is a battle against the earth, the project rising next door is a masterclass in shaping water. Engineers are preparing to build an aquatic venue so advanced it will become the new heart of water sports for the entire nation. Right next to the new stadium precinct, a new National Aquatic Center, or NAC, will rise from the site of the historic Centenary Pool in Spring Hill. This is not just a pool for the Olympics. It is designed to be the permanent national headquarters for all four of Australia's peak aquatic sports. Swimming, diving, water polo, and artistic swimming. The engineering of the pools themselves is impressive. The center will feature three brand new world-class pools. There will be a standard 50-meter Olympic competition pool, but next to it, there will be a unique 65-meter indoor training pool. This extra length gives it incredible flexibility. Using a moving wall called a bulkhead, it can be divided into different sections, allowing swimmers to train at one end while a water polo game happens at the other. For artistic swimming, a special pool with a depth of three meters is needed. 
This extra depth is crucial for the athletes to perform their complex underwater lifts and acrobatic routines safely. Together, these pools will hold millions of litres of water, enough to fill more than three Olympic-sized swimming pools. But the most dramatic feature will be a towering structure reaching for the sky. A 27-metre outdoor high-dive tower. That is like diving from the top of a nine-storey building. It will be the first of its kind in the entire Southern Hemisphere. Building a stable platform this high that can withstand wind and safely support athletes is a major engineering feat. One of the biggest engineering puzzles for the NAC is its ability to transform. For most of the year, it will be a community and elite training venue with 8,800 permanent seats. But for the Olympics, it needs to hold over 25,000 screaming fans. How do they do this? By building a massive temporary seating structure inside the main building, it is like building a separate stadium inside the aquatic center. This structure will be carefully designed to be installed for the games and then completely removed afterwards, leaving behind a more intimate venue perfect for national championships and community use. This transformer approach is key to the venue's long-term legacy. From the cutting-edge new builds in the heart of the city, our story now moves 15 kilometers southeast. Here, a beloved but aging icon is getting a $257 million rebirth, a project that proves the Olympic legacy is as much about transformation as it is about creation. The Chandler Sports Precinct has a special place in Brisbane's history. It was originally built for the 1982 Commonwealth Games. Now, it is getting a massive $257 million makeover. The old tired facilities are being replaced with a brand new state-of-the-art Chandler Indoor Sports Center. This new center will be an indoor giant. It will have seating for 10,000 spectators and will be split into two main halls. The first hall will contain 10 multi-sport courts. These courts are designed for elite-level basketball, volleyball and netball, but can also be used for community sports like badminton and futsal. The second hall is a dedicated gymnastics facility covering 2,400 square meters. That is an area larger than six professional basketball courts combined, providing a world-class space for gymnasts to train and compete. But the most important part of the Chandler story is not just about new buildings. It is about building for the community first. The government is building this huge new sports center for a very specific reason. Community basketball participation in the state grew by an incredible 79% in just two years. The community's need for more courts was already there. The Olympics just provided the opportunity to build them. Construction is scheduled to finish in 2027, a full five years before the Games, so local clubs and residents can start using these amazing new facilities right away. Crucially, the Chandler redevelopment is also about inclusion. The precinct will include a new, dedicated para-sport facility. This will become a training hub for the Australian wheelchair rugby team and other para-athletes, ensuring the promise of a truly accessible and inclusive Games is built right into the foundations of its venues. The Olympic effect is reaching far beyond existing sports hubs. In the Redlands area, engineers are preparing for one of their most unusual tasks. They are not just building a venue, they are literally building a wild river from scratch. For the canoe slalom event, athletes need a wild, churning river. But you cannot rely on nature to provide the perfect conditions. So for the Brisbane Games, engineers will build one. The Redland Whitewater Centre will be an Olympic standard artificial river, a concrete channel between 200 and 400 metres long, with temporary seating for 8,000 spectators. The technology that makes this possible is fascinating. The course is a carefully sloped concrete channel with a maximum gradient of just 2%, ensuring the water flows at the right speed. Hidden from view, a set of powerful pumps will circulate a massive amount of water through the course, moving up to 16 cubic meters every single second. That is enough water to fill an entire Olympic swimming pool in just over two and a half minutes. The rapids, waves, and eddies are not random. They are created by large, specially shaped obstacles placed on the floor of the channel. These obstacles are movable, allowing course designers to change the water flow and create different challenges. They can fine-tune the course to test the world's best paddlers, making every run a unique test of skill and power. But the most important part of this venue's legacy has nothing to do with sport. 
after the Olympics, the Redland Whitewater Centre will become a vital training facility for Queensland's emergency services. Firefighters and rescue teams will use the course to practice swift water and flood rescues in a safe, controlled environment. They can create specific scenarios that are too dangerous to practice in a real flood. This dual purpose is what makes the project so clever. It uses the Olympics to fund a critical piece of community infrastructure that will help save lives for decades to come. These incredible new venues will create the stage for the next generation of Olympic heroes. But what happens to the ground where so many of Australia's past sporting legends were made? After the 2032 Games are over and the last medal has been won, the iconic Gabba Stadium will be torn down. But this is not an ending. It is the beginning of one of the biggest urban renewal projects in Brisbane's history. The entire nine hectare site, an area larger than 12 football fields, will be completely redeveloped into a new neighbourhood. The vision is to create a vibrant new housing and entertainment precinct right in the heart of the city. The plan for the area, called the Wulungaba Priority Development Area, calls for thousands of new homes to house up to 24,000 people. Importantly, the government has committed that 20% of this new housing will be social or affordable housing, ensuring that nurses, teachers and other frontline workers can afford to live close to the city centre. This entire transformation is only possible because of another massive engineering project happening deep underground. The new Cross River Rail and Brisbane Metro systems will have major stations located directly at the redeveloped Gabba site. This will make the new Wulun Gabba one of the most connected neighbourhoods in Australia. It represents a long-term vision where the Olympics are used as a catalyst to reshape the city. It is about creating a true transit-oriented community where people can live, work and be entertained all within walking distance or a short train ride, reducing the need for cars and building a greener, more connected city. The engineering of the Brisbane 2032 Olympics is a story of incredible ambition. These are the plans, the engineering and the challenges. But the biggest question remains, is this the blueprint for the perfect Olympic Games or a multi-billion dollar dream that's destined to become a nightmare? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you found this journey into the engineering of the 2032 Olympics fascinating, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more deep dives into the world's most incredible builds and turn on notifications so you never miss a video.